Hi, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Elizabeth Green, and in this video, I'm going to be going over and demonstrating the most useful formula I have ever found when it comes to analyzing your Amazon advertising reports or spreadsheets in general. So if you're interested to see what that is, hint, it's a match and also an index and nested match formula, then stay tuned. I'll be demonstrating how to use these formulas, where to use them, and giving you a couple of real life examples that should give you an idea of all the different applications that you can use these particular formulas for. So if you're interested, let's dive into this. So like I said before, this is the most useful formula I have found. I, when I first started out, I didn't know a lot about spreadsheet formulas and spreadsheet functions. Now I definitely do and can do a lot of very high level things, but this was an issue I ran across a lot, was I had a particular list. And in this case, we're going to be looking at a keyword list and then cross-checking it with a bulk file. Now, if you're not sure what a bulk file is, um, if you're interested in learning, we have quite a few videos on bulk files contained in this channel. So you can go check them out after you watch this one but basically what it is is a bulk file is all of your campaigns all of your advertising across your entire account condensed into a single spreadsheet and you kind of see why that would be very useful and you can make changes to the spreadsheet and then re-upload it and have those changes uh, populate in your campaign super useful but it's also very useful if you want to analyze your advertising so in this instance what I've done is I've condensed it down um, now this is an example obviously these are a bunch of you know campaign six and different names and different ad group names but I have condensed it all down to a keyword level so I'm only looking at all of the keywords and in this use case what I'm going to be doing is taking a long keyword list and then seeing which of these keywords am I already advertising inside of my campaigns. So for instance, you might want to, um, you might have a keyword list that you have identified are definitely your top keywords, keywords you wanna go after. But you might be wondering, am I already advertising on these keywords? Or if I am advertising on them, where in the world are they contained within my account? Because maybe um, in this case, we're looking at a bunch of gifting keywords and maybe it's the season that you want to start increasing your bids on gifting or just see, okay, so of all of these keywords that I'm advertising on in my gifting campaigns, which of them is working and where can I up the budgets or the bids? So let's dive in and I will start demonstrating. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an additional column here. So these are all of my keywords under column L, keyword or product targeting. This is where all of my keywords are contained. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this column. I'm gonna right click and insert one right. So I'm just gonna create additional column where we can type in our formula. Actually, I want to freeze this top row so I can freeze and sort. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing in my formula. And the first one we're going to use is called a match formula. Basically what a match formula is, it says, does this match that? Pretty simple, but can be very effective. And what I did is I have my keyword list here. And again, I want to view and freeze this top header row here. So maybe I have my keyword list and I said, okay, this is a nice long list of keywords that I'm really interested to see which of these am I advertising on. But going through and cross-checking these two may be kind of difficult, so that's where the match formula comes in handy. So what I am going to do is I'm going to type equals here. I'm going to start typing my function, which is going to be my match. So once I hit match, it's going to... Um, pop this up and it gives you an idea of the um, formatting you need for this. So the first thing we're looking for is a search key. The search key says we are searching for this particular thing. So because it's on this row, I'm searching for this particular keyword on this row. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type a comma so I can input my next thing, which is going to be my range. Now my range is going to be what I want to cross check. So in this case, I want to cross check 
this um, row here. Now you can do, a, you can select a couple things here. Personally, what I prefer to do is just to select the entire column. So I want to search for everything within this column. If you're not interested in searching for everything in this column, maybe you only have um, one section that you want to find. You can what you can do is you can click on that and you can just drag down to highlight everything um, you want to search. Now, this next step is very important. You want to make sure you lock this range. And the quickest way to do that is going to be to press F4 on your keyboard. Notice when I press F4, it gives me a bunch of dollar signs in between um, these. So it's going to lock this column as well as it's going to lock these cells. And what it means by locking is we're actually going to take this formula and we're going to drag it down and cross check everything here. No, I did it closed it out before I wanted to because there is one more thing you need to input in a match formula which is going to be really important so we're going to type another comma after our range that we're searching and it's going to input the search type you always want to type a zero in here a zero indicates um, to this function that you want to have an exact match you don't want anything different you don't want anything um, so notice how I had a seven before, but when I type this zero, it says nothing. And let me check. So I do not have gag gift contained within this list. So what I can do now, now this is going to show an NA. It basically says we didn't find the evaluation um, when we checked, we didn't find this in the list. That's perfectly fine. There are ways to make this look a little bit cleaner, give you a nice true and false formula, but I don't want to get um, super, super technical here. So we're just going to leave it messy. It's still going to give us the um, the outputs we need to analyze things. So that's perfectly fine here. So what you're going to see when I take this little plus sign, see this little um, blue and I get the plus, what I can do is I can drag it down. And then what's going to happen is anything that it does find, it is going to give me a number. So anything that contains a number means it found that in um, the evaluation. Anything that contains a, let's keep dragging it down, um, an NA or an error message, that is going to tell us we're not average or we, it didn't find that in our cross check. And a quick way to have everything go to the bottom is you see this little plus and again you can actually double click this and it's just gonna um, drag it all the way down to the bottom of whatever your data set is so here we go now we know that all of these um, keywords that have a number we're already advertising in our campaign so what I can do is I can then apply a filter to this set and I can say okay um, maybe I want to find the ones that I am advertising on so I can sort only by numbers I can deselect the error message or if I only want to find all of the keywords that I'm not advertising on already what I can do is I can hit clear and then only select the error message because those are the ones we didn't find and then I know all of the um, keywords or whatever I'm analyzing that I'm not already advertising on in my campaigns. All right, so let's go through a few other applications that you might um, find useful with this formula. So this one over here, and this is honestly, I think the first use that I had for this particular formula. So what I ended up doing, um, if you're familiar with how bulk files work, everything pulls off a skew. It's not on an ASIN level. And oftentimes what you find is you can get a nice clean list of your ASINs, but um, sometimes this can be more tricky to find the SKUs. And oftentimes what you'll end up is an ASIN list um, through perhaps um, a business report. So maybe you're analyzing everything in your business reports and you want to find um, what SKUs are equated with that or you want to make a nice clean SKU list. But um, you have a long list of ASINs and SKUs and you need to match these to this. Well, you can do that with your match formula as well as an index formula. So what we're going to do is we are going to type, start typing in our match formula. So I'm going to click match. And again, we're looking for the search key. So this is our search key here. 
and meaning we're searching for this and then I'm going to type comma and then input where I want to search for this and that is going to be in this column. Now what I personally like to do is if I highlight the entire column, that means if I add anything here below, it's going to automatically cross check that versus if I only highlighted this specific section here, because it's not cross checking these blank cells below, what ends up happening is if I add anything below, I either have to go in and modify this formula or I have to retype it because it's not going to cross check everything. So personally, if I have something I know I might end up adding or I forgot something, I like to just highlight the entire column. And again, we're pressing F4 to make sure we're locking this range. And then we need to type a comma and it's zero to indicate we want an exact match. Close our parentheses and click enter. And um, in this case, I'm in Google Docs and it asked me if I want to autofill it. So it's really quick. Just click autofill. Yes. Um, otherwise, you can just drag this down to the end of your data set. And so what it does is it says, all right, we found the formula. Great. So we found it, but I want to get my list of SKUs. And this is where a nested index formula comes in handy. So what I want to do is I'm going to go through and I want to copy this, but I need to get rid of it so I can type my index formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control X on my keyboard and that deletes it, but that still saves it to your computer clipboard. And then I can start typing in my next formula, which is my index. So we have my index function and it is going to say, all right, what do we want to pull? So with our mash formula, we found where it's located. Those numbers actually tell, um, you which row those are contained on but we want to now say all right what do we want to reference and in this case we want to reference our SKUs. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click the entire i column now one trick to know is that if we selected the entire h column with our match formula you want to make sure you're selecting the same range with the index formula for instance if i did only um only the data set here, but I had selected the entire column here, you're gonna end up with an error message when you um, finish up typing um, all this formula out. So you wanna make sure you're selecting the same amount of rows with your um, the data set that it's cross-checking. All right, and then we also want to push F4 on our keyboard to lock this range as well, because we always wanna search all of this, we always wanna search all of this. And then I'm gonna type a comma, and then I'm going to type control V on my keyboard to paste. And what this is going to do is it's going to paste in my match formula because the index formula asks, okay, what do you want to reference and where is the row and column? Well, this match formula actually outputs what row and what column that original cross check is contained on. So I'm going to get the end result is going to be it's going to pull over whatever SKU matches this ASIN in this data set. So now I need to enter a close parentheses to close out my index formula and I'm going to click enter. And then what's going to happen if I drag this down, I'm going to be met with all of my SKUs and basically I copied all of these over to this list and of course maybe that doesn't make sense here but this application can be used um, if you have two reports that you know one contains one list and you want to pull a piece of the one report over to the other one this formula is going to be super useful i'm going to show you one more um, use case in this case what we want to do is say okay we have all of our keywords that we know we're already advertising on because we did our match formula but maybe I want to know which campaign and which ad group these particular keywords are contained on. So what I can do is I actually can use an index and a match formula to um, create this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy over this match formula. Because remember, it's pulling in what uh, row and column is. And then I'm going to type, start typing in my index formula. So I'm going to do index. And what I want to do in this case is I want to reference what my campaign name is. So maybe you have a huge list 
and um, you're not really sure maybe these are broken up and you wanna know what campaign these are contained in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of column D. So this is campaign. This is where my campaign names are located inside of a bulk file. And again, I'm going to hit S4 to lock it. I'm gonna put comma and then control V because remember I pasted in that match formula and actually I made an error because see this little equal sign? You don't want an equal sign contained within your um, inside of your formula that always goes in the beginning of the function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in parentheses, close parentheses to close out this formula and if I click enter, it says the name is just campaign, which in this case, Why is it not saying campaign six? Okay, three. Aha. Okay, so this is why it is because notice here, this is not equivalent. So notice here I'm clicking, I'm checking um, column L all I'm only checking a subsection of column L and then this one I'm checking the entire so what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to get rid of the row reference. So I'm only doing L to L. See, you notice if you don't type anything correctly, um, it's not going to work. So now I'm getting campaign six and I can drag this one down. So there I have my campaign six and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this one over because we want the campaign and the ad group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in name and then I'm gonna type add group name here and then let's go in and let's find our ad group now one thing um I want to show you is if I just if instead of clicking into the cell if I just hit control V here what it does oh it's gonna reference this okay I'm good sometimes when you just paste things over what it does is it's not referencing the correct original cell but in this case it is so sometimes if that is a problem you can just click into the cell and it will make a difference but in this case it's fine all right now remember i'm looking at campaign or i'm looking at column d to find my campaign name so what i can actually do is go back over here and see what column is the ad group contained in and that's column j so my ad group is under column j so what i can do is i can go in and modify this original formula instead of retyping all of this or getting rid of this and figuring it out i can go over here where it says d and I can just type a J in place of my D. And if I click enter, it's going to have this same thing. Now notice um, it's always gonna pull in. So if this was like say ad group one, and this was all different, just show that you can get different values here. Let me change those up a bit. Um, notice all of these are changed just to make sure we are we are doing this formula correctly um if you have your file it's going to be um you should have different ad group and campaign names for each of your campaigns and your ad groups so you can keep yourself organized but that has been um hopefully an informative video on how you might use an index and match formula and you might start to see all of the different potential applications for use of this formula again this is one of the most um game-changing formulas i originally discovered when i was digging into spreadsheet functions and i use it all the time for quick um quick and dirty cross-referencing or to check something it's definitely something i find useful and i hope you do as well if you are interested in getting more tips and tricks more on a high level like this i suggest you subscribe and uh, click the notification bell we put out these videos as often as possible and if you have any questions on this function or if you have any additional videos that you would um, find useful for us to make some uh, content on be sure to leave that in the comments as well we try and put out videos that uh, you all find useful so thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one